Forte Kitchen. A great chef once told me that it's cheating to add bacon to vegetables. I took this to heart. And so I have a little challenge going on here at 4K Kitchen to develop original vegetable recipes containing no meat or dairy. Here we go with the cauliflower. First, pull off the excess ribs. To remove the stalk, insert your knife at a 45 degree angle and rotate the head with your guide hand. Then, trim off the florets. Carve the stalk into a solid brick and slice it into planks. Later, we're going to brown the stock bits in cocoa butter and infuse them into our braising liquid. Rinse the florets well. Same goes for the stock bits. Now that we've prepped the cauliflower, we can move on to the base of the dish, caramelized onions. Thinly slice an onion. This is a breeze with a sharp knife. There's a good chance that you can bring your knives to a sharpener in town if you live in a major metropolitan area. Knife houses are a pillar of the culinary industry. The special unusual ingredient in this dish is raw, unrefined cocoa butter. You can buy this stuff in the baking section at specialty grocers or simply order it online. These chunks of cocoa butter are actually quite beautiful. They're like geodes or something. You'll notice that the cocoa butter boasts a deep, roasty aroma of chocolate and a rather high smoke point. However, it is not sweet, so the caramelized onions will add sweetness to this dish along with textural contrast. Start the onions on medium heat in the cocoa butter. Draw the heat back to its lowest setting and turn the onions every so often. Some people add baking soda to speed the process along, but I'm just letting nature run its course here. The whole caramelizing process takes about 30 to 45 minutes, but the result is worth it. The onions end up very crispy and will keep for a few days in the fridge. On to the braised cauliflower. Melt some more cocoa butter in a heavy pot on medium heat and fry the stock bits. Then, add hazelnut milk and bring it to a simmer. Grate in some nutmeg. I'm also adding white peppercorns, which are black peppercorns that have been soaked and stripped of their skin. Simply bash them with the bottom of a small pot. Be careful with this stuff, it's pretty strong. Next, add the cauliflower florets and put on the lid. Leave this to braise for 20 minutes on low heat. A note about braising. The word braise has its roots in the old French word for embers and the Norwegian term for sparkling fire. Authentic braised food is cooked in a cast iron pot covered with smoldering embers. Ovens are the modern day equivalent of this, but I'm doing my braise on a burner. When 20 minutes have elapsed, turn the florets over and give them another 10 minutes on the heat. The cauliflower will end up with a nice texture, tender, but not too tender. Once your braise is finished, spoon out the cauliflower florets and season them well. It's smart to season braised food once it's cooked. If you season it on the front end, then there's a good chance that the reduced liquid will be too salty. Strain the braising liquid to a bowl. Push the melted stock bits through the strainer with a spoon to thicken the sauce. By the way, if you want to make this sauce really luxurious, pulse it in a blender. In fact, you could blend the cauliflower into the braising liquid for a warming, wintry soup. I don't have a blender, so I'm leaving the texture as it is. Finally, a bright garnish for this dish. Thinly slice ginger into planks. Then, slice the planks into batons. Mince the batons very finely. This fine mince is called a brunoise. Brunois a bit of apple and mix it with the ginger and champagne vinegar or lemon juice. Add some orange zest and chiffonade some mint leaves. This garnish is a collage of bright flavors that classically agree with cauliflower. Meanwhile, for service, all you have to do is rewarm the cauliflower in its sauce. Time to plate. First, lay down those crispy, sweet, caramelized onions. Next, the wonderfully tender cauliflower. Spoon on that rich sauce. Mm. Add the bright garnish and voila! I'm also drizzling on a bit more melted cocoa butter and a touch of balsamic vinegar. There you have it. A super savory alternative to cauliflower and cheese sauce. I think that you and your guests will be very happy with this dish. <laughs>